You stole my little heart just to throw it away And although I have tried, there is no way I can find consolation in this cabinet Whoa, is this my life? Whoa, is this what I was hoping for? I don't think so There must be more I don't think that it's the case I know I could do better I don't think so There must be more Our bunches fell from grace I know I could do better Better without you
Hello, fellow guitar people. I, I don't know. We're not even looking at a guitar. We're looking at an amp. But to play that, you need a guitar. Well, you could use a tuba. Tuba five. Tuba f Tube. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Uh, drugs. That's the only explanation for this. Um, so we're looking at a, an inexpensive combo. I think it's 229. Is that what it is? No. I I'm gonna find out. I'm so prepared. It is 219. So, a 110, 5 watt, 1 channel tube combo um, with a Celestion G10R30, something like this in it. Um, and it has, which is very cool for a low budget tube combo and very unique. I think it has an effects loop and you can uh, run external speakers. There are three speaker outs, one of them is connected. So that's pretty damn cool. That definitely gives you some options. Now that amp can go from, it's, it's buzzing, wait a second. Aha, that amp can go from uh, clean to quite a bit of gain and we're gonna see how, that ha how it handles that. Um, it can be switched from five watt to one watt. That means as a bedroom amp, well, usually tube amps are never really the perfect bedroom amp. Even at one watt, you know, your neighbors are not going to like you. So, but it's possible to do that, to switch it down to one watt. We're going to see how does it handle itself by itself. Has a built-in reverb. Actual spring reverb tank, nothing digital. Spring reverb tank at the bottom of the combo. Um, it has a tone knob, so no major EQ. We're going to see how it handles itself. We're going to see how it handles pe uh, uh, drive pedal in front of it. We're going to see how it handles effects in the loop. And also we're going to see, uh, can we change its sound with an external speaker? You know, it can run an external speaker and we're going to do that. And if uh, Leslie would be so kind to go to the, f what are the cameras where we see the amp? I don't know. We, I don't know. Yeah, well, that one. Um, right here. I'm miking it with a Sennheiser E609, kind of a little bit not smack in the center. That would be a little bit too much. So kind of in between the center and the edge. Edge is about right here. So we kind of smack in the middle. And that's a Sennheiser E609 going into the Universal Audio Apollo. That's pretty much it. Relatively inexpensive mic, costs you about 100, 110 bucks. And we're playing it with the Chavel Sandimas Pro Mod, I think it is. Guitar clocks in at about 850 bucks, so it's not this, this super in, un, insanely unattainable guitar. And why I like it for this demo is because it has coil split slash tap. I don't know the difference. One is, the, one is, one of them is, and the other one is the something else happens. I don't care. Single coily sounds. So single coily sounds when it's up, humbucky coily sounds when it's down. So it gives us a lot of tonal options. I like to see how does the amp handle when you're not pushing it so much, which should give us a cleaner sound. And then with humbuckers, of course, it's pushing it more. So uh, that's really all there is to say. We're going to go through some things. Oh, on the table, which you can't see, I have a Strymon Sunset. Uh, can you? Can, yeah. There, you can see something. Uh, because that is a flexible overdrive, which means we could push it with a uh, treble booster or just a standard overdrive, which is kind of nice options. I'm going to go to that, actually. And in the loop, uh, so that no one can say, well, you use crappy little effects, we have a Strymon Dig and a Strymon Deco. So this is pretty much as high-end as it gets. So if it doesn't work for some reason, it's definitely not the effect. So, um, and that just leaves us to, I guess, play in single coil, in five watt. So let's see, throw in the panel. Thank you. So we got gain, tone, reverb, which we're gonna keep down for now, and volume. Gonna keep volume centered. And we're also gonna test the dBs. I'm gonna give you how loud it gets in dB. Not that that means anything. Technically, a 5-watt combo in clean against a band, pretty much not going to happen. Driven against a band if you really had to. But again, I'm going to give you DBs, and you can make up your own minds. Mm -hmm.
a little bit driving. I'm going to give it some more volume. Can't do it. Hmm. That humbucker doesn't sit right. Humbucker. Let's go to uh, the amp and dial in some reverb here. A little bit more gain, but again, I want I want to keep it clean for now. Always a little bit of bite in there, but very, very little. It's nice. It's it's boxy, but it's also foxy. It's kind. Of, it's it's fun, but always with this little bit of fizzle in it. Um, let's look at the tone knob. Uh, you can get it very subtly to be rounder, but not a lot. You can definitely get it to have more high mids. So that's what you're kind of dialing in. Very, very scratchy high mids. The thing is that the speaker itself already is pushing that high register. So be careful with that. Um, well, we're going to look at more gain. Actually... <laughs> Let's see, this is about as clean as it gets, and let's see how loud it gets with that as clean as it gets. So at full volume but gain where it still stays clean, uh, we're looking at 93.6 dB. Whether I'm, I'm thinking not Maybe play against a cajon, but not against a drum set. But again, this is not a 5 watt amp. It was never designed to really, you know, kill it in a band. So. A 
it really wakes up at that setting. I can't play. overdriven cranky crunchy sound and push it with the sunset it likes that it feels like it's fighting with it a little bit and it gets quite fizzy but that could also be the speaker that's in there because it sounds really nice and chimey for cleans but these speakers that sound amazingly beautiful and chimey for cleans like a Jensen for example and I have several Jensen 212s here they sound amazing when you use them for cleans that's what you want but do not run drives through them. Do not run distorted amps through them because all that high frequency, high fi kind of sounding, uh, high end does not sound good when it's distorted. It's kind of like taking a, a distortion pedal and running it directly into your mixing console. Bad idea. So that, that nice rounding off that a speaker does for distortions is not something that a Jensen would do. Not something that this one particularly does. So it sounds nice for the chimey stuff. But I think it's not the most compatible with the drive. So I'm thinking the speaker could have been picked differently. But the good thing is we can use a different speaker. We're going to crank up the game first. all the way down, it, it, it kind of works. That's, that, that's a lot of noise there. Reverb works nicely. Now we're going to put the Strymon dig in the effects loop. And it's a little bit weird because I have the dig quite high up and it's very subtle. So uh, something isn't quite right about the effects loop there.
And I'm gonna put the deco in. And that's even stealing some sound. And that's not the deco because we know the deco is a great pedal. So the effects loop is, yes, it's there, but for some reason, for some reason, what it's uh, uh, what is in it is is killing the sound, either killing the sound or n not giving us enough of what it is. Like the the dig should be way louder. It should give me way more effect than what I'm hearing. So I don't know, quite know what that is. Um, let's check it out with a Vintage 30 112 that I have right under it. So now we are on a Vintage 30 speaker, uh, a 112, and let's see how the distorted sounds fare with this one. It definitely sounds a lot fuller. Well, it's, again, it's a 110 against a 112. <laughs> Gonna have to get my levels straight here. Okay, that, that works. Clean with a single coil. Now we're talking. This is definitely working. Now let's look at best case scenario with the 112 and all the way up on everything. How loud can we get? went up to 103 dB. Don't know what that means in terms of going against a drum set, but hey, there you go. That's that's what that means. Um, leave one thing. Can I play at bedroom levels in the one watt setting? That is pretty damn quiet. Luckily, you're not watching me for the music. 
it's missing some some spike and some oomph there. Okay, that works. So the Tube 5 by Kong Amplifiers. Kong, yeah, let's say. We know, uh, we all know. It. It's made in China, otherwise 219, how is that possible? It offers a lot in terms of features. It offers a name brand speaker, that's a selection. Um, all Tube EL84. It offers a built-in reverb, which is damn cool. That's always nice that you don't need pedals just to play some nice, clean, chimey sounds. Um, offers an effects loop, which could work better. It's there, it works. Uh, but for some reason, my Strymons aren't really coming through like I would want them. So, yeah, if you have some delay, throw it on the floor. It's good. I mean, it's very unlikely that someone would run a Tube 5 with 700 euro worth of Strymons. So I don't know how it, how it would fare with other pedals. Those didn't quite work well. Um, uh, what else? Uh, external speaker out's oh, very nice because for me the voicing of the built-in speaker is very chimey, has a lot of high end, but the problem with that is that for the drive sounds it gets quite frizzly, kind of a little bit, I mean the tiniest bit, maybe 10% fuzzish. But that is normal when you have a speaker that sounds very nice for clean stuff, it will not sound amazing for drive sounds. So if you want something that gives you an all-round kind of sound. You'd rather go with a Vintage 30 or any of the other type speakers that are not meant for the cleans. With this amp, though, clean is... It's a 5-watt amp. Clean is a thing of the, the more quieter side. As soon as you get the drive up to where it's fun, or the gain up to where it's fun, it's already a little bit, just a little bit fizzling. So I'm thinking simply that they didn't pick the greatest speaker for this thing. Now, on the other hand, the basics are there. What you heard in the beginning of the song, uh, of the song, of the beginning, the beginning, uh, bad, blaga. What you heard in the beginning of the video, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, that track, Better Without You, that uh, I produced. I actually went through the Torpedo Studio. Granted, that's a 1600 euro speaker simulator, but the point is that speaker with that amp that I used sounded amazing in that track. So the amp portion of that 110 combo is great, and it gives you the option to run into external speaker simulation or actually to run into an external speaker. Or if you want to use it as it's, as the combo, maybe you're saying, hey, 220 bucks, it's a pretty good bargain. I'm going to invest another 50 or whatever it costs to buy a 110 speaker and buy the one that you like, one that rounds off the high end more. I think that the built-in speaker isn't showing the best side of that amp. Um, in terms of the drive sounds, they're really not, not too shabby. Um, do they have super clear definition all the way through complex chords? No, it's a too bad for 220 bucks. What are you expecting? Would I say, hey, uh, you don't need to buy an amp for a thousand bucks because the Kong Tube 5 is totally nailing it. No, it's not. Okay. In its price range, though, it's pretty damn good because for 220 bucks as a combo all tube, what do you get? Uh, I don't know. I actually don't know anything. I don't know anything else that will give you the features that it has with uh, the, did I mention the, um, the handle? The handle is absolutely gorgeous. Let's just show the amp side shot. Now that leather handle is totally mega awesome. It's, uh, it's got metal inside. It's reinforced. The whole presentation is very, very nice. So it's not like you're getting here. We built something. Go. No, it's definitely. A, a nice feeling and 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 vertig in German. Vertige Verstärker. Vertige is vertig, weißt du? In 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 Hessian, as we would say. Um, no, you're getting something that feels good. So, if you like slightly drivey sounds on the edge of breakup, brilliant. If you want to play quietly, pretty brilliant. If you I'm distracted. I'm sorry. If you 
want the high gain. It has that, but notes kind of disappear in chords a little bit. And I would recommend using a different speaker, whether it's an external speaker or some kind of speaker simulation. But again, for 220 bucks, don't quite know who else offers a combo that gets you pretty damn cool sounds. And for me, I'd rather play this than a modeler any day because it gets you to the note. It gets you in the sound. It gets you to feel what you're doing and reacting to it, dialing back, playing dynamically. It A, a tube amp will always make you a better guitar player than a modeler in the same price range. That's just me. What the fuck do I know? But for what they want for it, it's definitely a good deal. That's what I got to say. And also there's a video coming up called Giveaway. You should watch that. If you're interested in this amp and you live in Europe, I'm sorry, my American friends, I'm sorry, it's it's got 240 volts. But if you're interested in this amp, you should watch the Giveaway video coming up. Animals now, links below, as always. Heart just to throw it away And although I have tried There is no way I can find Consolation in this cabinet Oh, oh Is this my life? Oh, oh Is this what I was hoping for? I don't think so There must be more I don't think that that's the case no, I could do better 